ever, 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 ever hear Tennessee Whiskey again, that would be great for me to never hear that song ever. You know, again. I'm very but, pleased that I don't know that song, and yeah, I don't intend to. Sure that either. <laughs> I tell you, the song I never want to hear again is that fucking Wagon Wheel song. <laughs> you go down to Nashville, <laughs> you hear that shit. Every fucking bar we get, you go and you hear Wagon Wheel. <laughs> Here's the problem. Here's my problem with Wagon Wheel. Like my 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 girl is a um is a country music fan. I despise country music. So do I. Okay, I so it. like here's my problem with the uh with the whole Wagon Wheel song. Um, all of the things that they mentioned during the 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 chorus part, none of that stuff actually rocks. Like you know what I'm saying? Like none of that stuff actually rocks. Yeah. So I live in Kansas, and what's real popular in Kansas is hardly what's really popular with me. Yeah, like people come up to you and they're like, "Holy shit, so and so is happening tonight," and I'm like, "Yeah, tell yeah. me all about." Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think that song was supposed to be that. That was a point. Like none of that stuff rocks, but um, because the chorus was written by Bob Dylan, but it was like something he never actually put to music, and then the band um. Old Crow Medicine Show or whatever, they wrote all the other stuff, and then, and then they had a a song, right? And then, um, then the country people covered that their version. So it's like a third generational cover that just. So I'm pretty sure whatever Bob Dylan was going to write around stuff rocking that doesn't rock, he was probably going to have some sort of political like philosophical meaning behind it, but they just like took it and made it not that. <laughs> well, I, I guess, no, I guess I gotta be the one to say it. You know, way too much about this shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, more importantly, Bob Dylan, what does he know about what rocks? Like, I don't think even he would be like, me, yeah, me, me, me. I'm so glad. I don't know very much Bob Dylan. Well, I'm a Bob I'm Dylan fan. Like, I like his songs, but like Bob, Bob Dylan's not in touch. Neither no, he's not, rock star not in their seventies and eighties. Like, that dude is on a whole other planet right now. And you know why? Because he's fucking rich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he's higher and shit, and he's fucking richer and shit. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 funniest thing to me is like he won like a Nobel Peace Prize and decided, oh, fuck it, I'm not going. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, that's pretty rock and roll. You won a Nobel Peace Prize. Also, put in the fucking mail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I that, that, know- that's his whole mantra. It's all, you know, fuck the fuck everything. Yeah. I don't give a shit. All right, cool. Send it to me. I'm not going to anything. <laughs> Yeah. Probably melted it down and, and and made a frying pan out of it or something. You know what I mean? Like it's a new bomb. <laughs> he melted it into a fucking wagon wheel. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at Willie Nelson. I think He's Willie Nelson's it. still alive. But if Willie Nelson's still alive, he ain't been on Earth in like fifteen years. Oh, Willie Lord. Nelson's just in his own place, man. Like, and God yeah. bless can him. You, can can you turn a Nobel? Willie Nelson's like, can you turn a peace prize into a bomb? <laughs> And like, is that a possible? million guys on the internet that are like, yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll audition for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Give me some PVC and the apple. I'll get you fucked up, dog. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Biggest pot smoker at my school, I found out recently, became an engineer. And I said, mm-hmm. yep, that plays. I remember Makes when sense. Phil turned a Burger King ashtray into a, a a bowl um by rolling it up and then he went into the the bathroom and i think he stole the screen from the sink and then he did something with one of the straws yeah like he he was good to go that's some MacGyver like bullshit there that's some like <laughs> yeah. macgyver stuff man so he was like an engineer yeah. before he was an engineer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better living through engineering. But I think he quit pot, though, which I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. But, yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's like one of those days. I love those memes where, like, someone takes a hit and then they say something that's, like, really, like, crazy that you never even thought of. Like, like you say, it would be like, takes a hit. Have you ever noticed how every sea in Pacific Ocean sounds differently? Like that type of thing. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> like the epiphany smoker. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. Like that guy. Um I you know what? There's two things, two things that happen. Um I think 
uh, two things that happened when I used to, when I actually did smoke. Um, this is all in high school. I haven't, I haven't smoked anything like, like that since high school. But, um, one, I thought I created the turn signal. Like no, I, the no, I idea can. that like, <laughs> if I'm going this way, I just lift it up. Or if I'm going that way, I just pull it down. I, this was way before I actually drove. I'm, I, I wasn't a driver until I was like 25. It was like, I didn't, I didn't actually drive until I was like 25. Wow. So like, this is before then, this is like high school time. I thought I created that shit. Like really, really thought that that was just a genius idea. Like I should patent this. Like, Motherfucker, it's been bad. Depending on where you live, people still don't use the turn signal, so yeah, it's understandable. Right. right. <laughs> and then and then the second thing, I got myself so worked up one day. I was so I was so angry. I was gonna cry one day. I was I was high. Um and I realized that when you go to the store and you give someone your money for something, you don't get your money back. Whoa. Like change exactly. Them. Like no, not change. Just like I'm just giving away money. Like that's how fucked up I was. I was like, you're just oh, giving away okay, money. I got you. Like I got you. yeah. And I got myself worked up. I was I was so angry. I was like fire mad that like if I go to the store and I buy something, I don't get my money back. But the, I wasn't thinking like you get whatever you paid for. But it's exchange. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> There's right. an exchange you, here. But I was like, you takes your money doesn't get it either. They're real yeah. pissed off. It's like yeah, <laughs> no, I was. I was real, I was real mad. Like those assholes just take your money. Like they just took my money. Like, like yeah. I, I remember when I was an assistant manager at Radio Shack. This kid comes up to me and he goes, he goes, so Fred, like today you paid me. I think we paid him like seven fifty an hour or something. And he goes, and I worked for eight hours or whatever. And he goes, and I made like just around sixty bucks. And I was like, okay. And he goes, but when you cashed out my drawer, he goes, I did over like. 6,000 in sales. He goes, so I handled 6,000 in sales and you gave me 60 bucks. And I said, well, yeah, there were goods and services exchanged for that. And he goes, yeah, but I doubt it's really that equal. I said, well, go get your own store. I'm a man after my own heart. Yeah. I'm a man after my own heart. I, I gave, recognized game. You wanted a little commission or something there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny too, because right after that, I was I got to go to him and be like, hey, Radio Shack just turned in commissions. It was trying to get them from going out of business. They did commission on everything. And I was like, you're about to get commission. His commission pay was shit. He didn't sell shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you only got commissions when you sold something. It wasn't when like somebody brought like a VCR up to you and wanted to ring it up. So uh, yeah, uh, you, had to, you had to talk them into it. Uh, so. The Lord fine God. line there. Oh yeah. This is a rolling start, man. Yeah. Let's, let, let's go ahead and get started. Um, What's up, everybody? It's your boy Scarfinger. This is Scargasm, and um, we're in the building. Woo-woo. Um, Chase is in the building, of yeah. course, and and we are in officially in all guest August. I like shout to out, shout, that. shout out to all guest Woo. August. Actually, <laughs> you know what? I the the idea came up last year when I was ready to quit. I, like I was just feeling burnt out, and like I was doing three podcasts, and I was just I was just ready to quit. So like. I don't know who came up with the idea, but it was just like, yo, for August, let's just have guests on for every show. It was like, you know what? That means I ain't got to do shit. Holy, holy shit. I can fucking do that. Like, you know, like that, that's basically what happened. That's how August, August, uh, started. Um, but I'm, I'm really like, like last year, um, was one of our biggest months as far as downloads go, uh, for the show. And, I was like, maybe we should just do this every August. I mean, I still want to quit sometimes. Um, I mean, I still, I still want to quit quite often. <laughs> we all often. do. We all do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, to- yeah, yeah. Matt's already quit, and um, Fred <laughs> has too. So we have some. Well, I mean, I'm, Matt, I'm Matt took the back seat. <laughs> he he no, went from see- podcast host to podcast co-host. <laughs> see, I would, I would love to quit, but then that means I got to leave everything to you and. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> wow. Very good. There it is. No, there no, it is. Here's, 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 what, real. here's what it is. Here's what it is. My man doesn't, does not know how to start a show. He does not know how to start a show at all. I mean, he just kind of stumbles and fumbles through the beginning of the show. Like it's, it's just, it's natural to me at this point. Just like, you know, just, just like how I did it. It was like, okay, rolling start. Let's do it. And then I just did yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, Chase. 
But that's how it's got to be, man. Sometimes it's a quirky start. Sometimes no. you got professional starts, and sometimes <laughs> well, you got a quirky no. start, right? I mean, at least your start has to be semi-professional, right? <laughs> Somewhat. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the one thing I hated about the 40 cast, okay, when I was doing it, and the same thing when Vic was doing too, is like before the show, we had all this talk back and forth and saying shit and stuff like that. I was like, all right, cool, let's, let's start the show. All right, let's, let's get, you know, we're, we're talking, let's start the show. You start the show and you go through your intro, and now everyone shuts the fuck up. And no one talks in. It's like, and you're, it's like you're pulling teeth trying to get people to say something. So maybe That's we should do the the, the the um actual intro to the show is pre recorded, and then when when you um just start talking, that's the actual, and then you put the <laughs> yes. intro in afterwards. So then everyone's already talking and. But this, I mean, you a podcaster. Don't like, don't be a bitch. Like, do it right. If you don't do it, do it. Like, don't don't be a bitch about it. And be like, yeah, I'm gonna pre-record this. And I, and like, so I can do different takes and make sure I take the best. No, nah. fuck that. Don't be a bitch. Like, do this shit. And do I'm it just right. saying to keep people because sometimes when you say, oh, dude, no, because we're starting, look, look, and then everyone shuts up. But then what? Do, then what do you do for for a show like today where we have um, Devious Mister Matt and. And my my homeboy Rojas. I keep wanting to say like, okay, so I know that you're not like 100 percent white dude, but like I, I keep wanting to say my nigga Rojas. Like my, my nigga Rojas just kind of rolls off the tongue. It's my nigga Rojas. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I would I would kill for a last name like Rojas. Like, I do I do like my last name. Nobody believes that I'm Hispanic, and that's fair because I don't either. But I checked, I checked, I look <laughs> enough like my dad. I think it I think it plays. But uh, I didn't know that Costa Rica had the North is white people, the South is brown people. So I just ended up on the wrong side of the border, I guess, or the right side, depending on how you look at. It. I'm in the right. Amer- I'm in America now. So this has been something I've been meaning to ask you. Sure. Um. What um the the game that you played and I watched the whole thing of you playing the game with the uh with the with the dude couldn't hear. Oh yeah, the quiet man. Yeah, the quiet man. Did you ever go back and play that with the sound on? No. <laughs> I should. I never uninstalled it. It's sitting on my PS4. Right I've been now. I've been waiting for that video because I was I like, I really want to know what the fuck's happening here. Because you know, like, I'm transitioning into video uh, on a regular basis. I've got uh, a lot of stuff uh, that's uh, already done. And then I'm just slowly trickling out and I should do that. I should absolutely do that just to see if it's any better or worse. And just, but where you kind of like, be, it has to be worse, but that makes right. everything better. Like, <laughs> but where you like, fuck this game at the very beginning or the very end of that, the, where the you very know, end. Yeah, but it's been so long. I don't even remember. Like it's I'm, just a blind flash of just pain. <laughs> I just remember some dude I used to call man bun. I think that's in there. But other than that, yeah, I don't remember a whole lot. So I could, I'll go back and do it. I should do it. I would totally watch that because I really want to know what the people are saying. And your sanity. Oh, yeah. I I, I never finished the one about the, like, paranormal investigator. How was that? uh, I can't remember. I think it was called The Sign or something. It was like an isometric game about a paranormal investigator. Isometric game about a paranormal investigator. Have I played that? Being covered there. He has no idea what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm trying well, to think. Well, anyway, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> have we talked about this game? Should I know this game? Or well, I, just... I think I, was, I, I saw a little bit of you playing it, but I never finished the oh. video. But um, mm. but yeah, this is uh basically Fred Rojas's uh swan song. This is his last podcast. Yeah. This is yeah. We've got uh, we've got one pre recorded one that's going to be coming out soon, but otherwise, yeah. You done with podcasting for real? Yeah, yeah, I gave it oh, up. Wow. Um, I'm switching to video. Uh, I'm living my life in in long form, um, <laughs> or in short form. Sorry, not long form. In, I'm going from long form audio to short form video is how I, I phrase it. I'm going to like five to fifteen minute movies. Uh, videos, shall I say. And I'm really focusing on um, history stuff. So my YouTube, uh, I had a couple of videos go live uh, today, August 5th, the day of our recording, where I'm going back and um, I, I had already released this, but people didn't know what it was. And I'm noticing a lot more viewership this second time around, or maybe I have more subscribers. I don't know. But um, it's a chronological analysis of uh, every CD-ROM based console game um, based off of when they came out. So we start with the TurboGrafx CD, PC Engine CD, and 88 and just go based off a of release date. And in it, I analyze the game because I've played, I haven't played most of these games, but I also give like historical context and pop culture context. 
So, um, but on top of that, I'm just doing stuff. Like I've always wanted to play stalker. So this weekend I just booted up and played around with five hours of stalker. And then I'll just have a video coming out this week. That's just like my take on stalker. And it'll be like five, 10 minutes. Uh, and so I'm just, I'm just doing stuff like that. And the reason I did that was I wanted to get back to, and I'm, I'm sure everyone in this group can understand this. I'm finally at a point where I can play a lot of games. My daughter's old enough where she doesn't really want to spend as much time with me as she used to. Uh, and so, and she's a gamer now, so she likes to play her own games. And so I get a lot more time on the weekends, especially every other weekend when my wife works. And so I can just go back to games I've never played before. And I'm like, I want to play these games. And when you have a podcast, you want to be on the new shiny. And so you mm-hmm. often start playing the newest games, which is fine. I'm not criticizing it, but you often find yourself playing the newest games when maybe you don't want to, or your desire is to play older games, but nobody wants to hear about that. And I'm not even talking retro. I'm talking like, you know, games from like April, you know, or something. People are like, eh, that's already passed. And so you get into a spot like that. And then in my case, I like to go way back. Like Stalker, I think is 11 years old. Yeah. I don't think many people want <clears throat> to delve that. into it. Yeah, so there's a game I'm thinking about picking up on GOG called uh, Torment Plain Planescape Torment. Planescape I've always wanted to, Torment. Yeah, I've always wanted to play that because a, a lot of those older um, PC uh, RPGs were all, always kind of interesting to me, but I never really had a PC to play them. So my first entry into RPGs fully were console PC, you know, mm-hmm. console RPGs. So, you know, uh, I, you know what I should look on uh, Good Old Games for? It's a game I loved at the time, but like nobody had played it. Um, what's it called? Star Trek Armada. Yeah, Star Trek Armada. I think is on there. Yeah, I should find that. I mean, I, the only time I go to uh, uh, the GLG is when I'm looking for like the old like uh, impressions games, uh, city builders like Zeus and Pharaoh and stuff like that. Like those are mm-hmm. my jam. Like I really like those games. Um, but like, so I haven't really spent that much time on on good old games. But I'm I might actually go back and try to find some of this stuff. I'm not very nostalgic. Like so, like I'll I'll go through the process of getting a game, play it once, and be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Cool. Well, but there, <laughs> there, is, there is the unfortunate, um, what I call the Steam game, which is you buy a game on Steam, you don't know it doesn't work, and Steam has no damn desire to tell you it doesn't work, and you got to do either. It either just doesn't work. Like Dark Void, fun fact: if you ever own Dark Void on Steam, it just doesn't work. Like right now, you cannot play Dark Void on Steam. I'm sure some dude in the Ukraine came up with a patch that's only on certain torrent sites that may make it work, but otherwise, it's not going to happen. Gog, I'm have, sure it works. That <laughs> happened to me. That's, but, that happened. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool because, like, um, because I noticed that with Fallout Three, like, I've everybody that's thinking about getting Fallout Three for PC, I'm like, do not get it on Steam because it doesn't work. You can make it work with like mods or whatever, and people are like, oh yeah, you can mod it out and make it work because it's only optimized for Windows XP. Yeah, which and is it's- ancient, but the GOG version out of the gate, controller support, everything works. But yeah. I mean, it's ancient, but it's the best Windows OS. Like, let's be honest, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. But oh, Steam? Yeah, yeah. I'm not criticizing Steam. I'm just saying that God. No, I mean, I mean no, XP. No, a- XP. XP. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, we only got rid of XP because Microsoft made us. <laughs> right. I do have bad news, though. It looks like Armada is not available on GOG. But yeah, God's cool because and actually, I was only gonna um, play once anyway, so it ain't really that big a big one of us. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that Gog is actually owned by C D Project Red? I yes. do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I think Blue I think Blue told me that a long time ago. That's why he's like, all this old shit and the Witcher. Like <laughs> Well, I get funny. I get funny things from people who because now Gog's got its own like launcher and stuff, which you don't need. For the record, I don't even have the launcher. But I get people. But uh, I did use it for The Witcher because it had achievements, and I bought The Witcher three on Gog, and I played through the whole thing. And that's always what I get from people. Like I've got like a dozen people who are friends with me on Gog. I always get the same response: "You got triple digits on the Gog version of The Witcher." <laughs> and I just said, "Yeah, yeah, I put 122 hours into the Gog version." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what is, what is, like that's the we do think about it as the best version to have because it's their it launcher. <laughs> what is what is it with uh, PC people complaining about launchers? I like, I, don't, I don't. I'm a, I'm PC people and I don't understand it. I think it's just a convenience thing. You know, you used to be you go to Steam, all your games are in your one library, but now you have to go to the Epic, 
client or this client, that client to play your game. It's a couple yeah, extra steps. I'm the it's when, it's my, like, I still like, got all my icons on my desktop. I press, I, I double click one of those. It opens whichever launcher it is and it plays the game. Like I don't yeah. get the whole launcher thing. I think, yeah. I think people don't remember updating a driver for a specific game. Now we oh, bitch God. because NVIDIA has got a new driver the day of release to work best with a game. But if you launch that game, it'll still work just not as well on without that driver. On top of that, yeah, we don't have icons. I remember my whole background was littered with icons of the different games I had installed. Now Steam is just like a stack, but yeah. People It's a convenience thing. No, I, no, I still got my icons though. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I have a few icons. I'll only I'm old. Only icons I have are the are the games that actually aren't in Steam. Mm-hmm. So to remind me that I have them installed and to play them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have. Uh, I mean, mine. It's hilarious when I boot up my gaming PC. Uh, now, none of these launch. Like I, I have even Steam doesn't boot at launch, so I've shut them all down from booting at launch. But I've got Origin. I've got GOG. I've got, <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing it yeah. right now. Uh, yeah, all, these, these, the, all of my games. All of my games are you pushed know what over he's here. Playing, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I didn't know you was that big of a PC gamer, Scar. I know. I'm. I'm. Well, here's the thing. I'm not that big of a PC gamer, but there's there's games that I can't play on the console. I, like I like tycoon games, like tycoon yeah. games and city builders and stuff like that. And the uh, the even though there are a couple available on the consoles, like I do play a little bit of city skylines on, on 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 Xbox and stuff, but it ain't really the same. It's not really yeah. the same at all. Even though I do I do prefer Tropico with a controller for some reason. I feel like they designed later Tropicos around that. Like I've never been a Tropico yeah. guy, but I preferred playing four I've and never five played it. The controller. Never played one. Never played one of the Tropico games. I love the fact that like you can you can piss somebody off and they'll come get you. Yeah. Like this is this is like for real. Like, <laughs> like if you get really bad at this, like you got to balance a whole bunch of like making promises and 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 stuff to different factions. Hey. And like if one faction gets too too upset with you, they'll send goons to come get you. And if you didn't prepare and like build up your like your military and stuff like that, they'll run up in the palace and come shoot you. Oh, yeah. See that that's why I'm pissed off uh, civilization pisses me off because I, I purposely try and piss other nations off to make them come attack me or do something like that. And they don't do it. They just, they you know, they, oh, we're mad at you. We're not going to talk to you. But they don't attack. They don't do anything else. Like, <laughs> They're passive aggressive. Do something. Do something. <laughs> They're passive aggressive like, except for the person that you think will be passive aggressive, but is actually not even very bloodthirsty. Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhi is always bloodthirsty for some reason. It's like, bro, like, what is you doing? Gandhi like, will God, fuck you up. You know what? Be. He had one mode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People don't talk about it. You know, Ben Kingsley made you think one thing, but no. Oh. Like, yeah, no. Um, but uh, but there is a game scar that I saw on Steam that you might like if you like micromanaging. I heard this is the best city builder for people that like micromanaging. It's like a USSR like Soviet uh, city builder, and since you're a communist, you micromanage everything. Yes, oh my lord. <laughs> so like so for people that like the like micromanage. It's, well, it's, have you guys ever played? Any of you guys played Frostpunk? Which is a game I that play is not what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, so um, Blue got me a review code for Frostpunk. Cool. And, and he gave it to me because I like playing those type of games. Yeah. But Frostpunk was fucking depressing. Oh, yeah. Like, it is. It is super depressing. It made it very hard to actually get through it, to play it longer than a little bit, because I was just like, why do I feel this way? <laughs> like, it's just depressing. It's just, it's, it's cold. Like, people be dying and stuff. You got to think, like, you whether you're going to try to actually people help gonna... people or start Man. cutting off their limbs. People were dead like, already. Wow. You, just, you just let them live at least longer. I'd be putting kids to work. I'd be... <laughs> Like, I put my look. I put the kids to work, but I do. I make them do like like simple stuff. Yes, like wait, y'all, y'all yeah, just go cook in the coal mines. So, yeah, yeah. Not yeah a, y'all not go cook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go, yeah, go yeah. over there and get them branches real quick. Like you know, this stuff like night. That. Everybody, uh, every everyone under thirteen was off shift by like six p.m. Like I was cool. Like I was, you know, and I I built um, heated cabins for them and everything. But that game, the reason I bring it up is that game. Um, is from the the developer same developers did this war of mine if you've ever played that game 
Um, and both games are another depressing game. Yeah, those games are the world's fucked. Everybody's gonna die. And would you like to walk a path where you try to make the least number of bad decisions among a sea of terrible decisions? <laughs> and mm. for some people, that's cool. Some people, it's not. For some reason, they're really good airline games for me. I love playing those games on my laptop on a flight. I don't know why. Um, but that's where I played the most of both of those. I put at least a dozen hours into this war of mine. Um uh, on a on a flight and same thing i was co- to, coming and going from disney i think when i <laughs> did frostpunk so but, as but you do real, like, play, like, <laughs> like going to the happiest place on earth playing me. the most depressing game you could play <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something though. i guess when i was- land <laughs> when i landed epcot was just a joy that was my first day and it was just like yeah some reason i want to tour the world of beers i don't know why <laughs> I, I guess he's doing the the thing where you um, eat some salt and vinegar potato chips just to make the cake taste sweeter. Heck yeah. Although I do like salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> yeah, salt and vinegar chips is the bomb. And my daughter's, broke, there. I, my daughter's the only seven-year-old who sits there alone eating salt and vinegar chips while the rest of the kids look at her like she's a monster. <laughs> she is the be- She is awesome. She is the best. <laughs> like ran- I can't. I like can't. Anymore. And, I- and then she's sitting there with the salt and vinegar, you know, so. Salt and vinegar chips and a nice beer. Oh my god, that's some that's some good stuff there. She doesn't like ranch. Uh, she does like ranch. Sorry, oh, okay. I, I misspoke. I, sour, I meant sour cream and onion. Oh, okay, she'll tear up oh. a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. But like, yeah, no sour cream and onion. She uh, I mean, and Cool like, Ranch is the best. Is the best Dorito. No, it's not. Let's be honest. No, it's not. Really do this here. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Let's do this here. <laughs> Nacho cheese or spicy cheese are the best Doritos. That Cool Ranch bullshit that came out in the late '80s is just an imposter. Oh, it's taco imposter. What are you talking about? Yeah. Cool Ranch is by far the best. Like no, the the not, the Nacho ones yeah. is the ones that people know the most. Yeah. but that's like saying you know what I mean like bring back the taco flavored Doritos. Thank you, thank you. I'm way back you. when. Taco? Yes. It's okay, fantastic. I'm cool with the taco and the and the Monterey Jack ones wasn't bad either. Uh, Salsa Verde is the right answer, um, but uh, I think that one's out of print too. You you always find a bag, but it expired like the, two years ago. The salsa the salsa ones was a little bit too tomatoy for me. Yeah, Salsa Verde yeah. isn't tomatoy. Yeah, Salsa Verde isn't. I'm talking Salsa Verde. That's the one where the chips on fire. It's a great or, or, bag. Oh no, no, I don't know that one. It'll it'll uh, it, it it bites you back in the morning. Make sure you guys remember it. way back when the Dorito bag was clear. You could actually see inside the bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But they made sure they put that whole weight down low because oh, yeah. they they want you to know that half of the bag was empty. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> full of air. But nacho cheese down with the Cool Ranch. Well, they go by the um the ounces, not the size of the bag. <laughs> Some stuff may happen. Completely frank with you guys, like I don't eat chips or bad food for me a lot i use i use my calories on alcohol but um i'll tear up a bag of any dorito you put in front of me like my wife has a sign on a bag of nacho cheese doritos because she's watching a couple of kids this week uh while i'm at work and she's got a sign there's a post-it note on the bag that says for the kids no fred (laughs) (laughs) you know what i had today and i haven't had in quite some time i had some funions Funyuns are amazing. Like Funyuns are fucking amazing. Like, can we talk about how amazing Funyuns are? Yeah, except wow. for the except for the roof of your mouth. Like Funyuns, <laughs> except for the it's roof like of your mouth. Berries, Funyuns are amazing. It's the sacrifice you have to make if you want that flavor. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I bought some. I bought some off brand um some onion rings, whatever you want to call them. Um, Were they the wise ones? The wise ones are all I right, but they don't. They they're. You have to kind of grow up with them. I just kind of like, I, I just had some. They had no Funyuns that day in Wawa. They had no Funyuns in Wawa, so I was just kind of like, you know what? I, I, I'll just get this. It should be cool. And I was like, man, this ain't Funyuns, though. Like, this is this is not Funyuns. That's the only thing I kept saying to myself. This is not Funyuns. Nobody's man. nailed Funyuns, like, but Funyuns. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Funyuns are okay, but like, the Funyuns are distinct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there's some things to, where you have to buy the original. You can't buy the knockoff. You know, some knockoff yeah, you, like you can pass by with. 
like hot fries. If it ain't, if it ain't Andy, like the Andy Cap, if it ain't Andy, I can't fuck with no hot fries if they not Andy, dog. Like for real, y'all, y'all, y'all eat off brand hot fries for real. No, yeah, there is this, there's this place called Quick Trip around here in the Midwest. It's kind of like a, it's your Seven Elevens, but and they very rarely have handicaps. And so they got these knockoffs and you're just like, don't, don't be fooled. Like, no, don't believe their lies. We get a hot dog. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be healthier too. (laughs) (laughs) No bun. Get a hot dog. They got Pico. They have fresh Pico though. I like that. Putting fresh Pico on a hot dog. That's all right. Um, But you know what is disappointing though? If you've never had it, the Funyuns, uh, they have a um, awesome blossom Funyun. A what is it? Uh, awesome Blossom or whatever the Outback oh, from, from, from Outback Blooming Onion. Bloomin onion? Bloomin onion, yeah. They've got a flavor of it, and it it doesn't. No, no, it tastes like a funion. It's oh, just no. a funion with more salt. Don't do no. it. Just get funions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you had the fiery hot funions? No, I'll do it. I like no. super spicy stuff. So yeah, it's it's not super hot, but it's definitely spicier than most chips on the market. I think they're good. Cool. They don't taste like funions, but they're all right. It, it all t- tastes like pepper in the end. Oh, yeah. um, uh, I don't know if you want me like talking about where you're from, but um, <laughs> the because uh, Amber, my my wife's brother, w- lives out that way, and um, he was just in a Walmart and uh, like um, oh, it won a Walmart. Oh, at a first Friday. Okay, so yeah, real quick, I didn't know who you were talking to. You're talking to me. Uh, I'm fine letting people know I live in the Kansas City area. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to get any more specific than that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah um, but yeah, he was at a first Friday and uh, like some girl got shot in front of him. And I didn't know if you like heard about that. Yeah, yeah, so that happened on Friday. It was um, unfortunate. Uh, some dude was doing the threatening thing where he shoots the bullet in the air. Wait, first, first Friday and someone got shot on the first Friday of the month? Yeah. Because it's on the first Friday of every month. Uh, this is this is something I despise personally, but it's basically where a bunch of the rich upper middle class uh, white people get together and they spend a lot of money and buy a lot of rich stuff and, and, and drink a lot of wine and get hammered in public and the cops turn their eye because they pay all their taxes. Anyway, but – People show up there and like, I I think Kansas City needs to wake up a little bit and realize that it's a good thing when people that aren't just a gentrified group show up. Mm. Trust me, I'm Mm -hmm. from Chicago. We saw the benefits of this. (laughs) Diversity can be okay. Anyway, two dudes showed up acting like idiots. I know nothing about these dudes. I don't even know from the news report or anything like who they were. But the, the, the story I heard and what happened apparently was, the dude did the threatening thing where he shoots the bullet up in the air, which at that point you're going to jail right away. So like, why even bother? Just, just punch the guy in the face. It it sends the message much easier. And then you don't have to freak a bunch of people out. Anyway, people may not be aware of this, but when you shoot a bullet in the air or just off to the right or various other places, it goes somewhere. It has a very large trajectory. It comes back to earth. It goes somewhere. And as somebody who worked in the ED at K, uh, in, in Kansas City at KU Med, which is our biggest hospital, um, we will see the people where that bullet went. I saw a dude who was peeing behind a go chicken go drive through. Already a bad idea. <laughs> And he got belted with a stray bullet. <laughs> oh, I, mean, no. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever want to be at a place called Go Chicken Go. Oh, they're lizards like, and okay. lizards. They're fantastic. They deep fry them. They cover them in hot sauce. You may as well. Anyway, it's a thing. Uh, so he was doing that, <laughs> and he took one in the calf, right? Like, and, and dude, he didn't know where the bullet came from. We never identified the shooter. And we got cops on, on site at KU Med. But actual KC cops, not like Rena cops. And they couldn't find it. Same thing happened here. Un- unfortunately, this was much more tragic. There was a young girl there. I believe she was young. Um, and she, the bullet came down on her head. So she was killed. Yeah, that's, the, you know, yeah, I'm, well, yeah, you know, I live in a very like, hood place. So, so we have to be, we, we have to be like, go to Facebook and be, and like, be like, be mindful on the 4th of July and New Year's. Like, we know y'all like to get around and like pop off instead of using fireworks. We, Okay, I get it, uh, but maybe you might want to be mindful that that bullet has to come down somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's, it sucks that you have to say this to like fucking adults. Like, you do realize that that bullet got to go somewhere, and like, it may come down on you or somebody that you care about. 
Yeah. And, you know, Call of Duty helped me because I was telling people, people were like, well, she was way far away from the go- from the other guys. And I was like, yeah, but come on, Modern Warfare, the Corillus effect. I know what that is. The shape of the earth. It changes the trajectory of the bullet. It's not going to come down straight down. You got gravity. You got the curvature of the earth. All kinds of things. Plus, when that dude was shooting threateningly in the sky, did he make sure he pinpointed an exact 90 degree angle straight Hell up? No. Like, you know? Right. Exactly. Right. Wadi Coyote. Or not Wadi, but uh, you know, 70 Sam out there. <laughs> Exactly. So it's just unfortunate that that has to happen. I mean, a lot of tragedies happened this weekend that kind of hid that. Usually Kansas is making the news for real stupid shit like that, which is, I'm sorry, that's stupid. What happened? That was stupidity that could have been avoided if somebody had taken two seconds and thought about what they were doing versus their ego in a large populated area. Because when you're in a place populated like that, that bullet's going to come down on someone. Yeah. And my, my homeboy works, you know, the, the El Paso, mm. um, my, my, my best friend in high school, um, worked in the mall that's right by that Walmart. Damn. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, holy shit, where, are you okay? And he was like, I wasn't at work. I was on my way there, but I wasn't there yet. Wow. When all of this happened. Yeah. My buddy's so, near there. I called him too. He He lives right by that Walmart. I don't know if that's his Walmart, but he lives right by there. And I was like, and he's got, he's got uh, two twin girls at two years old and then his other daughter's four or five and then his wife. And I was just like, you guys, okay. And he goes, yeah. Um, he goes, actually, I didn't know about it yet. I didn't have the news on cause my kids were asleep. So I, I, cause I think it happened in the early evening or something. I found out about it about nine, 10 at night. So but either way. And, and like the same thing happened with the homie Tim Pan. Like there was a shooting at a, um, a, a Walmart near his at, in Mississippi, like, and they had to have like a talk about it at, at like his Walmart. It's like, what what's going on? Well, you can't even go to Walmart. Like, I figured I go to Walmart. I see crazy people who came out the house dressed in something they probably shouldn't be dressed in. And I figured that was the worst part of it. Yeah, like, maybe I'll be helping you out with that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like having you know, I figured the worst part about going to Walmart is like going there and there's like twenty lines and three cashiers. Like that's like figuring out enough worst tragedy thing. going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Now, now we can't go to Walmart. Like Walmart. Well, for real. Here's what I'll say. Like nowadays, it's not safe. If you're following that, it's not safe to go anywhere. But. I also yeah. refuse to live yeah. my life in fear. But yeah, it is unfortunate, but I think this is the risk we take everywhere, every day. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live. You're not immune to this. And anybody who thinks it is just lining up to be the next uncautious person walking into a bad situation. And most people in those situations never asked for this and were aware of what was going on. And that's just unfortunate. But like, there's nowhere you can go right now. Like, there's, there's no pattern here. So, uh, someone will mix her ass if uh, yeah. we smoke up. It makes me catatonic, but I'm up. drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't actually smoke. Smoke. No, um, Matt used to use you. You about that cigar life though? Right? Yep. Yep. I'm all about that cigars. Oh hell yeah! I got humidor full back there, and all awesome. the pipes. Is that and what that is? Yeah. yeah awesome. Well, yeah. On top there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Sorry, I've but, seen one before, so I knew what I was looking for. But yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. No, it, it's full in there. So usually on a Saturday night or Sunday afternoon, I'm out in the backyard with a, either a beer or some bourbon and some cigars and relaxing, chilling, enjoying Sunday afternoon before I gotta go back and hit the grind again on Monday. Nice, Man. very nice for especially in the fall. The fall it's the best time of the year, and you're sitting out there where it's nice, cool, relaxing. Oh, it's great. I love it. Listen to the Reds game in the afternoon. That's good stuff. Oh, you still care about baseball? I, oh, I forgot. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. You're a little robot. I, think I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm still hey. huge on the baseball, Mike. I mean, okay, like I, I only care about baseball because of the fights. Like at, at this point, baseball and hockey are the same for me. I only care about when people fight, especially like, if the I Reds don't really are playing. Care. Especially if the Reds are playing. Good lord! Yeah, and they, they be throwing balls at each other. Like it's, it's getting like it seems like it's getting worse. I don't think it's getting worse. It seems like it's the same thing, but like. Like it's 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 a real deal. Like it's a difference between like somebody who's throwing you know mid eighties miles an hour 
uh, fastball at my face. But like, you know, like now when you got people throwing close to a hundred miles an hour and they throwing fastballs right at me, like we got some issues and like, I think we need to fight about this. My only problem is like, bruh, somebody just threw a bat, a ball at you, right? You got a bat in your hand. I'm do what back. you need to do, and they, they'll <laughs> stop throwing balls at you if you do what you need to do. Like I know you probably gonna get suspended for life, but somebody gonna have to take one for the team yep. and make sure that this 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 ball throwing balls at my face is not gonna happen again because I'm gonna come see you with this bat. I already got a bat in my hand. Like let's do this. I think that should count yeah. up the fence. I think so too. You throw something that hard that fast at my face, I'm sorry. In any other yeah. world, that's self defense. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like <clears throat> people on motorcycles and that road rage and stuff against them, people in cars getting upset at motorcycles and they get out and they get up to, you know, the motorcyclist and they, you know, right in their face and the motorcyclist has their helmet on. So they're just fucking the headbutt the car driver or something like that. You know, like I got a helmet on. What are you going to do? I, you know, <laughs> hit me in the head. Go ahead. Break your hand. Yo, and the, the coolest thing ever is um, knowing you long enough to see you graduate from that scooter. <laughs> 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 like, cause you just you kind of started slow, and then you kind of worked your way up until the, the, until like a full on motorcycle. I think that's fucking dope to know you long enough to see you graduate. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sad to see your little ones grow up and get old. But uh, yeah, 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 one from that scooter, which had many stories on that, to the uh, that motorcycle, my first motorcycle I bought that had that unfortunate crash on, and then my mm-hmm. uh, new motorcycle I bought after that. So yeah, it, you had you you there was a video of that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I made I, my, I really I've been making that. money off of that video. For real? <laughs> For real? Yeah, I'm, I'm up to like six hundred bucks. That I've gotten off. Of there that. you go. Yeah, it's Fuck awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I, awesome. I, I I still check out the one where that that freaking old guy on the uh, <laughs> and the little rascal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every now and again, I have to like, I have to watch it again. It's it's just so fucking funny. <clears throat> I, I, I you know I thought for sure I was being punked through that whole thing. I don't know, but it was it was a mess. <laughs> that was a mess. That old guy. God, has have have y'all seen the boys yet? Yes, I yes, I got the last two episodes I gotta watch. Have you read the comic book? Because I know you like the I I had I had the comic books downloaded and I never actually got around to reading them. That was something that um that was some one of that's one of the things Jay Bird tried to get me on to. Mm. And I I had them, I just never really got around to reading them. Um because I was I was doing a lot of comic book reading on my phone, and then I would read like The Walking Dead, which he got me into also. Um but then like I would read The Walking Dead before I went to sleep and I was having these really <laughs> that was perfect up during, um so so i was just uh-oh uh-oh and we've lost like, uh, like, he'll, there we go <laughs> no, oh, fast oh shit oh, i can tell that he's saying shit just, in that yeah <laughs> right yeah uh-huh. I, I paused because there everybody else froze there you go I paused because everybody else froze. Uh, I don't know what else happened, but I was just saying that uh, the 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 Walking Dead made me stop really reading a lot of comic books uh, because it just messed me up so bad. I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm done with this shit. And so I had I had them and I had them downloaded. I never got around to it, so I watched a uh, I watched a YouTube video of somebody going through each of the graphic novels of, of the collections. Um, so I have yeah. so I have a very good understanding of what actually like really happened and. It's some sick shit for the comic books. I mean, it's just sick for the boys. I'm glad they, t- yes, yeah, I'm glad they toned it. I'm, I'm glad they toned it down for the TV show. I wish some of it would actually make it to the the, the TV show, like Hero Gasm. Like, yeah. I want to know how you do that. Well, for well there's a, a whole other season TV coming up. up. But like, well, apparently they have at least three plans. Yeah, they they have they have a third they have a third season like they have an idea what they want to do for the second season and they have some ideas that they want to carry over to the third. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I like the changes that they made. Um, I, I like I really like the changes that they made. Uh, to uh, a lot of the characters are very different. 
um, than their comic book counterparts. And there are some things that were um, there's one thing that was left out that I thought should have been discussed more. And this, this this isn't really a spoiler. So for the people who are worried about spoilers, blah, 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 whatever. I haven't um, and I feel comfortable. Okay. So in the comic books, in the comic books, the 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 main heroes are basically staged. Mm-hmm. And they don't really know how to use their powers that well. They just they just know how to do what they're doing because it's all staged. And I thought that should have been something that was like at least like discussed in the TV show and they never actually went to it. Like the like the the main villain like all he does is use his laser eyes for everything. Like that's his that's his that's his go-to problem solver. I'm just going to laser everything. Um but like they don't explain why. Like he has all of these he base, he's basically Superman, but he doesn't use any of the other abilities because he doesn't really know how to use them very well. And they never really go into they never really go into that. Like you see him use his his super hearing and his X ray vision a little bit, but like when it comes to actually like fighting bad guys, he doesn't do anything but laser eye people. But they never actually explain why that's the case. So I huh. I thought they could have I thought they could have explained that a little bit. Well, I mean it's only the first season. There's only what eight episodes. You can't you can't fit everything in. I think that's a problem a lot of times. Say with a lot of these TV shows is everyone wants their answers all at once. And mm-hmm. that leaves nothing for the rest of a show or anything like that. So, yeah. and and I think Preacher, uh, unfortunately, fell underneath that same issue where they tried to cram so much in the first season. And mm-hmm. now they're kind of screwed up with the rest of it. And, of course, this is the final season that's going on right now. So, um, mm-hmm. you guys are going to laugh when I reference this real quick. But a perfect example of this, we waited, well, some of us waited seven seasons for Buffy to get to the point. And it never really quite got there, but they strung us along enough. And we, some of us waited 11 seasons for Fox and Mulder, sorry, Mulder and Scully to get together uh, in the X-Files. At the same time, Mick G fucking OC season one, he got more shit done than anybody. And it, it that, <laughs> that show did not make it. That show made it four seasons. And we didn't even Mick G? I did. Who the hell has thought of Mick G? You don't know producer years? Mick G? Everybody should know Mick G. <laughs> no one has thought of Mick G in like ten years. <laughs> that's nah. that's fair. But my point is, is that yeah, when you I know him from the like, music videos, I don't. I don't oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, is that the OC season one answered all your questions and then some. It was like seven seasons packed into one really long season one, and it's not good TV. Like I'm sorry to say, mm. you. Like most things on the internet, you think you want this, and you don't know what you're talking about. So I'm with you. But like, let's be let's be honest, right? But some shows can actually pull that off very well. I think Breaking Bad did it pretty well because it's like you're, the whole premise of the show is we're going to watch this mild mannered dude turn into Scarface. But like, he kind of was very Scarfacey towards the end of the first season. And then it was like, well, how do you deal with being Scarface if you were this mild mannered person? And that's how they were able to kind of stretch it out and write it. I think your writing staff has to be pretty talented in order to make this a thing. But like, it's possible to do. It's just you know, like sometimes, sometimes if your writing staff ain't good enough and you try to stretch this bitch out, you end up with lost. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the I think another challenge, and I can't speak to this, but maybe somebody else here can, uh, is source material. Again, it has source material. Be- Breaking Bad didn't really have source material. And I think uh, it, it benefited from that. I think the challenges we see mm-hmm. with a lot of these shows and especially like – Sorry to invoke it, but Swamp Thing, like, is that there is source material there, or, or at least what people think are source material, and they and they think they know what they want extrapolated, and it doesn't work very well. The problem with Swamp Thing is where it was. Like, who who knew how to access it? Right. You know what I mean? Well, like, <laughs> it's like Doom Patrol. Plan. Doom Patrol is amazing. I only watched the first episode. Why? Because it's available on YouTube. Yeah, but don't worry. It's, it's going to be part of HBO soon. Just give it a minute. <laughs> they made that choice. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, it's kind of like the people that are like, man, all this character development. I want to see um, 
them do something is taking too long. And then if they have something where all these people are doing something and there's no character of the element, they're like, why do I, why do I care about these characters? I don't know these people. It's like, that's, well, that's you were just, I, you were just complaining about character development. That's why I like Joss Whedon. Like, I, he gives, he gives you all that. All of it. Yeah. Character he development. Makes, he makes character development with a sprinkling of monster of the week kind of stuff. And or that's usually the first hitch. Season. Yeah. They, he found other hitches, but, but I like the monster right. of the week thing because to me, like the X files, um, when it starts to get into the meat of like the actual plot, you know, the aliens and the government and all that stuff, I think when it's the monster of the week, it's more interesting. Like the the actual, there's more gems that I remember as monsters of the week than any of the like actual overarching government shit. You know, I would argue Agents of Shield actually kind of mix and match those pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will. I, I do like Agents of the Shield. I did. I have not watched the current season. Yeah, um, me neither. Because because look, I have Hulu, but you know, Hulu only like lets you see like the last couple and yeah. like the, the last couple, and then I was like, well, I'm already past there, so like I have like the last, I have like episodes three through whatever, and I was like, fuck, I can't, I can't watch the first couple of episodes, so like I might as well just wait for the whole shit to come out on Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, or or my my suspect my suspicions are we'll see it. I don't. I I think we'll see it on that new Disney service, which like yeah, who's going to stay subscribed to Disney once that comes out, or to to Netflix once that comes out? But. Well, actually, um, I think it's been announced that because they bought Fox, Fox has a larger has the biggest stake in Hulu. It's the Disney thing is going to be an ad on the Hulu. Oh, see that that would make sense, and Disney's already announced that. Um, Hulu will be where their mature Marvel content will go. Uh, Hulu plus Disney is a much better package than Netflix. And I bet, I bet they make that price point the same or less than uh, Netflix. Netflix is going to have to go to 20 bucks by the end of the year. And it's just a, it's a hard sell, especially because Netflix can't help but put its shit on DVD and Blu-ray later. I don't need to worry about Stranger Things, and thank God I don't need to learn worry about Castlevania anymore either. It's all coming out like they're they're putting it on disc, and they should because it's the only way they're going to get my money anyway. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so to me, uh, I don't like the direction it's going. This is much like the Steam argument. I don't like that Steam is where everybody likes to play their games, but I'll take advantage of it. And the same is true of uh, Disney Hulu. I don't like that there's one spot, a uh, one stop shop for everything, and it's one company running it all. But I'll take advantage if it's going to happen because nobody's asking my opinion anyway. Yeah. If I if I don't give Disney my money, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Disney yeah, don't care. Right. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't wait until this damn year is up for my Hulu, um, so that I could actually pay extra to get that to, to get the ads taken away. I, this shit is this frustrating. See, I went. I went from no ads. We were no ads for years, um, and then I did the uh, Black Friday deal where I paid twelve bucks for the whole year of Netflix. That's what I'm doing right now. I did ninety nine cent for yeah. for, for, for a what? year. Ads are all right. <laughs> I'm more talking yeah. about these days. You, you, you know where ads are getting bad is YouTube. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! I pay for YouTube Premium. I've done oh, that man. since. Do they, I do they kill ads? YouTube I, Premium will. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube Premium, Premium does YouTube. kill ads. Okay. You yeah. get no ads, and also one thing about YouTube Premium that no one really talks about: um, your YouTube videos will play after you go to something else, or you turn your screen off. Right. Right. Actually, I was thinking about. Getting on that too because we went Google Home. I, I wasn't a too big fan, but my wife wanted a speaker in every room where she could play music, and so going to premium also allows me to get music on that stuff. So, um, but I was and, thinking and about it. What I did was I right right before the 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 last presidential election because I remembered the previous presidential election and I got sick of the uh, the election ads. Like it just got on my nerves. So I saw a thing where you can get YouTube premium for three months for like 99 cents. And I was like, yo, I can ride this out through the election. Like, I don't have to think about this at all. I don't have to think about none of this because I watch Cobra Kai. Of- so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Co- Cobra Kai is a damn amazing. And like I said, I'm not very nostalgic, but like Cobra Kai just as a thing is oh, fucking amazing. I, am, and I, I watch. I- 
I watched both seasons basically in one sitting. I watched them both in, in I watched them both in one day. Like the first season, I was just kind of sitting at work, not really doing anything. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna check out Cobra Kai. And I started watching at work and I was like, I need to finish this. Like I <laughs> I, I I wrapped up at work, came home, and finished the damn season. And uh, then uh, the same thing for when the second season came out. I ran through that thing in one day. Uh, and, well, the only reason I even thought about it was because um, I didn't use to monetize my YouTube videos. I just never did it. People were like, why not? And I was like, I don't want to bother people with ads. And then a bunch of people started pointing out all these instances where ads would show up even though I wasn't monetizing. And I was like, oh, well, shit. If they're going to force people anyway... And a bunch of my friends were like, look, dude, like, we don't, we don't care. We're used to ads. You're the only channel that doesn't do it. And I'm sorry, you're not the only channel we're watching. And so, <laughs> and when I monetized it, nobody gave a shit. And I made, uh, I made some money. Like you make one video about hacking a PS2 to play shit off the USB and like, it's, it's all right. It's all right. To put my kids through college. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not really. <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, my um, I I started I started another uh, YouTube channel for my paintings, um, and it hasn't really it hasn't really taken off. But like the 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 lady that I kind of patterned my YouTube stuff after, uh, she was just talking. And she does a she does a separate channel called the Business of Art, where she just kind of talks about stuff. And she was just like, you know, I make these paintings. I don't really have to sell them. And she was like, because of the YouTube video, I've already made $600 off of this painting and I didn't have to sell it. So like, what's the point of me worrying about like trying to get rid of it when I've already made $600 off of a fucking eight by 10, you know what I mean? Like, so like that kind of thing, I I can't wait till I'm at that status, but then, you know, I actually have to do shit. (laughs) And that well, seems to be the problem right now. <laughs> well, let me be clear after I make that statement because I just said I left podcasting, which has never made me money, but I never tried to monetize it either um, and went to videos. I'm also not doing this for that because I'll be clear. My retrospective videos don't – they do good view-wise, but they're not the the money makers. No, daddy usually makes a video on how to hack some shit so that he can get paid. Like, no, it's, I, I do that stuff as kind of like the motivation to keep up with the historical stuff. Um, you know what? I need to look up a video of how to hack my Oxbox. Your Xbox, your original Xbox. Yeah. I call it the Oxbox. It's funny. I've, I've recorded that video. I just haven't put it together. I need to put it together. It teaches you the three stages, the regular soft mod, how to, uh, put a huge hard drive in there and then how to how to make it all work because i've got a bunch of them actually i'm i'm gonna mod chip one of them which mod chipping is just how you do it with the later xboxes you don't have to do it but but yeah Mm. do you have a disk drive that works that's the one question i gotta ask you right off the bat i believe it does like when i stopped using it everything was still working if you can load splinter cell we're fine uh but uh but yeah that's (laughs) that's the one problem you need to hack an an Xbox or an Oxbox, you need to hack those when the disk drive stops working. The whole reason I hacked mine was not to pirate. I don't pirate anything. Was to be able to have the functionality my fucking 360 had, which is I put a disk in, I install to a hard drive, and I play off the hard drive. Yo, <laughs> let me. T- you, you mentioned a 360. Let me tell you what just happened. Okay. I don't know if I talked about this on the show already, but um, my my girlfriend works in storage. Um. It's self storage, uh, and she found in a unit a box with a 360 in it. It was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, we'll see what's going on. We plugged the 360 in, and it had a fucking red ring. Oh no, oh. shit! Okay, it straight up had a red ring. I was like, yo, I haven't seen a red ring in so long. Like this, it, it actually made me feel something. I was like, my wow. Phone. I bet they'll fix it. Yeah, at this point, if they've <laughs> never done red ring repair on it, I bet you a million dollars. Because I recently had the same thing. So I this is a, a quick PSA, but it blew my mind. I bought the I'm, I'm one of those guys. I bought the Xbox Elite controller the day it came out, one forty nine ninety nine. Where that box and receipt are, I don't know. I don't even think I can tell you where I bought it. I don't even think I know what retailer I was bought. I bought it at, and the rubber grips started coming off. Apparently, there's a flaw in how they manufactured those. The controller holds fine. It works fine. But the grips start to fall off. Problem is, when you get this flimsy rubber grip on, you can't, like, hold the controller. And you start focusing on it instead of playing your games. So just on a whim, 
I just got on Microsoft support, got on their website, logged in, hit up their tech support people and just told them that they asked me for the serial number. It had never been warranty repaired before. They had me ship it to them. They're giving me a new one. Word up. Like, you'd be surprised what companies will honor stuff like that. Just cause, cause why not? Cause, cause the chances that you fix that Xbox and you put that shit on the internet and you see Doom Three is suddenly out for nine ninety nine, you're like, oh shit, I've never played Doom. Ah. Three. Let me get me a points card and do this. The chances are high, and so of course they're going to do that. <laughs> Mark, my Microsoft's not going to let those three sixty servers die until they are absolute until it's absolutely like at rock bottom. Nobody's you know touching it. And that backwards compatibility just ensures it'll stay even longer. Yeah, because they have to have it because of the backwards compatibility. Actually, I people are saying they're selling a shit ton of 360 games. Because yeah. let's face it, I'm, you know, I'll just say this and then I'll let you go, Scar. But let's face it, this generation has some good games. It's no 360 PS3 generation. And people are realizing that. And people are looking back. With them nostalgia eyes, maybe like me, a couple whiskeys deep. They're like, "Oh, I remember fucking Dark Void," and they're they're buying it. They see it for ten bucks. It's on the shop. They're buying it. You know what? I miss, I was I was thinking the other day. I was like, I miss playing Grawl with the homies. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I miss playing Grawl with the homies. Now I don't I don't like versus multiplayer, but like those little missions where it's like Terrorism? eight of y'all. Um, eight of y'all that, j- that you had to play a co-op mission that you just got to get rid of a whole bunch of motherfuckers. Like I love that. I used to love that shit. Like, yeah. like I, I mean, man, I miss. I kind of miss those days. Like we talked about that a couple shows ago. Like how like we don't really do stuff together no more. Like we used to yeah, because there's, there- so, there's not like there's not like a whole lot of like really really good things to draw everybody together and but there's so many different things like everybody can go their separate ways and play the things that they love um so like like when the new halo comes out like not everybody gives a shit because like we have other things we can play uh so like i miss those days when like the new halo or gears or call of duty would come out and we would all be there yeah yeah, because uh, I, I think a, a lot of it is that, for one, we're getting older and, like, we're doing other stuff. And, because there's stuff, because when you said, oh, I missed the Grawl stuff, I mean, Siege has that same shit, like, the, the terrorist hunt and all that stuff. But oh, yeah. it, it's not the problem of the games. It's, like, our problem. Like, we just can't align to do it. We haven't done a game night since um, last November no. when we did um, uh, Extra Life. Well, yeah, but um, I'm, I'm not. Are you I'm not paying Xbox for. I'm not paying for a Rainbow Six game without a single player. Sorry. Well, I mean, it's got the okay. co-op. Well, but but here's the thing: like, it's more and more become the problem of: do you have an Xbox? Do you have a PC? Or do you have a PS4? And thanks to Sony, we just can't all get along. And to be fair, if X, if Microsoft was winning. Don Shitty Matrick would still be in charge of Microsoft and he would block that too. So I'm not criticizing Sony. But I criticize Sony. They stagnant, B. They stagnant. That's why they sold 100 Everything. million units. Yeah, they sold day. they sold a hundred million, but like that doesn't really matter to me. Like every, you know, you could sell all of the copies of the the system that you want to, and like yeah, you might have some cool exclusives, but like nobody I know plays the things for longer than maybe two weeks at the most because everybody is playing the same third party shit that everybody else is playing. Well, and if you're psychotic like me and you follow executives, um, <laughs> you know, uh, Shane Bettenhausen's still there, so he's still rock and roll, and there's a couple other people, but Nick Sutner left PlayStation, Adam Boyd's left PlayStation, um, just recently John, uh, not John Vinyaki, um, John, uh, whoever, Andrea Renee's husband, he left PlayStation. These people are leaving PlayStation who were the talent that their job was to go out and get new experiences coming to PlayStation. And in many cases, exclusively to PlayStation. And I don't see Sony working very hard to replace them. And maybe they are, but they're not putting these people front facing and they need to. And even if these people are no, like, yeah, if you were a fan of the old one up days, you know, all these people, but like, just, you need to get people there who are working their ass off to make sure Sony is the place where you want to go get games because it's 
it, it's it's scary. Like you got a new system coming out, but what's going to be on it? And and I don't think Sony can survive by its exclusives alone. Um, it's got solid exclusives. It's much better than Microsoft's portfolio, but that's not what it was always about. The 360 was not won because of Microsoft's exclusives. It was just helped by it. Yeah, I I don't really get the whole um, exclusives are everything argument. I, I I've never got it. Like I've I've never been I've never been that type of I'm buying this thing so I can play these exclusives. And like when we talk about some of these exclusives, like we never discuss the utter trash exclusives that they had at the beginning. Like well, you Kill didn't Zone. Like that. <laughs> Kill Kill Zone, Knack, The Order, the that fucking racing game that they kept trying to say that they were gonna give us for free and then it was some like bullshit. Oh, um, like no, I'm just kidding. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, see, Rocket League was helped because they gave it to us on PlayStation Plus, yeah, and like cross, they they should just do the cross thing, but they can't because uh, because they gave it away for Plus, so they shot themselves in the foot. But yes, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about um, Drive Club, uh, yeah, Drive Club. Thank you, yeah, awesome. Rainbow. Yeah, like there was. I mean, the order was so trash. Like, uh, you know, it was really funny. You- I criticized the order when it came out, and I got railroaded for it. And now everybody seems to be on the same page with me. But damn, y'all took a long time to get there. I'm not saying and it's a Kill- company, but Killzone but- is a very beautiful piece of shit. Like it is. <laughs> I mean, it is I mean, amazing. Look, Shadowfall, fan, and you are not. Yeah, wrong. Shadowfall. Shadowfall is Shadowfall. not a good game. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is it is beautiful. Like it is like gorgeous. It it is very well designed graphically. The rest of the game, no. Like I, I spent I it spent most of that game it plays a lot like PS 2s Kills on One. <laughs> I spent most of that game yelling at my TV, like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why do I even care to keep playing this? I am on the balcony shooting the Nazis as they slowly charge towards me. This makes no sense. This is the seventh level, really? (laughs) Uh, Character development. We won't character development. (laughs) Exactly. You know what? When you got to the end of Killzone 2, Radic was a piece of shit, but at least you were like, I know what the score is. This weird I, Mohawk motherfucker Rico is who I'm with, and this is my guy. But see, but see like Rico, like come on, Rico is like is 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 basically PlayStation's cold train. It's like there is no reason for you to be this hood in a world that doesn't exist. <laughs> connected to ours. <laughs> like so in, right. in in Killzone, I think it was three, he actually says the phrase, it's like one eight seven on a motherfucking hig. Like he <laughs> actually says that in the game. Like I think that's in the E three demo. I was actually in the theater for that E three demo. Um that was the one year I was fortunate enough to go uh, to E3 and do the deluxe tour where I get to all the press conferences and stuff. But yeah, I do believe he says that. Uh, and even if he doesn't, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, it's like, even like with him and Coltrane, it's like, how do you end up being like this stereotypical black dude in a world that's not connected to ours at all? Like, how do you get to be this dude? Kind of like, kind of like in, um, kind of like in Mass Effect. Where you have that one character that's clearly Mexican, and like, like, how do do, do they even I still make Mexicans? Effect, like, uh, this is like, this is I like hundreds. Like of, when you said that, this is right. like hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of years later, and like, how are you? How are you Mexican right now? Like, I thought all of this stuff mixed up when the aliens came and we all became one people. How are you Mexican here? Yeah, no. The only accent that should survive the apocalypse is the Brooklyn accent. Like, <laughs> it's, it's true. I had, I had, a, I had a, I had a Brooklyn dude tell me something very profound about the Brooklyn accent. Uh-huh. And he said, Brooklyn just sounds like a bunch of mush because you have all of these people from everywhere and it just mushed all of that stuff together. And that's how you come up with that. Hell yeah. It's just, it's just a mush because of the mush of people that it took in that one area to make that, you know? That's what happens when all of Europe yells at each other in one city. Like, I'm telling you, one district. Like, <laughs> that's what it is. And I love it. But, like, yeah, no, you're totally right. Like, especially, 
there's a lot of stuff. But you know, I never thought about it until you said it. Like even yeah. now, I don't think about like the hood stuff that Coltrane says. All I ever think about is that he's got the, uh, um, the woo, you know, like he, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's yeah. just a fan of wrestling, man. No, it's, I just, I just, I just think of him as like what we think of as like the, you know, the 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 character that he was in those that it's the same guy from the um the office linebacker videos, the same the same guy does the voice for Coltrane and it was just like yeah you know what you don't need to do anything else just do that and it was just like yeah but like he's in like another planet like you know what I mean I get it like you know and then they had to create a sport for him to have played in order to justify him sounding like sounding like a stereotypical football player you know what I mean Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah it's funny it's funny when you don't know any better what you don't notice (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I'm probably not the first person to say that, but mm-hmm. again, we get back to this is why you need to hear everybody's opinion. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's like I'm I'm like I'm aware that there's not very many of us in like the top roles in in in, in video games, so I pay like extra close attention to to him and like Rico and like some of the other ones. It's just like, come on, man! Like, what are we doing right now? That's kind of why I liked uh, how Terry Crews' uh, character in Crackdown Three. He didn't, he didn't conform. I mean, it was Terry Crews' shit, but like that's his own brand. Like that has nothing yeah, to do with. Yeah. You know what? He was just Terry Crews. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. he was just Terry Crews. It wasn't like it. You know, it, at least it was like is it was like here, right? Like it was just like future Terry Crews. It it's was not still like from a culture, I guess, is what I would say, right? Like it's not mm-hmm. like just excising a culture for the sake of trying to. I don't even know what you'd call it. Whatever. But I couldn't really like even though even though I know Terry Crews has a sensitive side, but I also know that he could um he could beat me up by flexing his pecs. So like I couldn't say anything bad about Terry Crews in the yeah. first place. But he's just the rock hard teddy bear. Haven't you seen White Chicks? Like that really shows you the true <laughs> Terry Crews. Like <laughs> And if you haven't seen that movie, regardless of race or ethnicity or uh, anything, okay. you gotta see white chicks. <laughs> I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a uh, uh, I'm going to make a statement and it's going to make me sound very, very less hood. Here goes. I like the thousand miles before white chicks. <laughs> nice. Wow. Yep. I heard it on a TV show or something like that. I was flipping through channels. It was on MTV. And I was like, Oh, that sounds cool. I like that. I downloaded it from like one of the, whatever downloading service I was using at the time, but I downloaded it. I had it way before white checks came out. Well, I don't know how to tell you this, but the, the proclaimers, uh, I think all of us in the white population, we got a postcard that lets you know when it was going to be playing so that you could get real into it. Mm-hmm. They're like, they're these two European dudes. They're from Eastern Europe. They don't speak much English and they're going to be on there with their guitars and their wide mouths and you got to go see them. And we were like, okay. I yep. got, I got the postcard upstairs. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> it mostly went to suburban uh, Midwest. I don't know why. They, they, yeah. I, yeah. They came to Ohio for sure. <laughs> I know my cousins in Nebraska got it. <laughs> but yeah, you know the Terry Crews thing, like where you said he's like playing the same character, which is Terry Crews. Like we were um um Michael's uh I forget his name, um Dexter. He played Dexter. But um but but yeah, like we uh the wife and her friend were starting to watch Six Feet Under and I, I had seen I love uh, Six Feet. I seen a few episodes of that way back in the day, but I seen more of Dexter after the fact, right? But then when I went back and watched him Six Feet Under, I realized, wow, he's actually playing Dexter here too, mm-hmm. but without yeah. the murder. <laughs> yes, he does. He does. He doesn't have much range. He's he's just a person who deals with what happens after the murder. Um, he he doesn't have what's his name, Michael Hall? Yeah, Michael Michael C. Hall. That, yeah, Michael C. Hall. Yeah. Yeah, he do, he doesn't have he doesn't have a whole lot of range. Yeah, That's I was what, thinking Michael C. Hall, but it sounded like the kid that was in Breakfast Club, which but, is Anthony Michael Hall. Okay, so there we go. Clarified everybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever seen him in something 
that like oh Amber was watching something where he was playing this British dude and he's trying to do a British accent and Bruh, I seen my girl was watching something and he was doing a British accent and I just kept laughing like I just could not stop laughing at him trying to do a British accent so again, you guys said trying yeah it, <laughs> he, was, he was trying really hard like really hard if he, he had, if he had never heard him in anything else he might have <laughs> been tricked by it but the dude's from like North Carolina He's not tricking nobody. <laughs> so, you know what's amazing is how British actors can put on an American accent like nothing, but American people can't put on a British accent. Is it is what was, was she watching Safe? It's a TV it's a Netflix TV show. It, it might have been. I believe so. It was about a murder or something or Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, it is. It was it was Safe. Gamer. Do you remember that great movie? Uh, I heard it best. I don't remember. I don't remember that at all. I've seen it. I've, I just yeah, kind of blocked okay. it. <laughs> yeah. It's just been blocked out of my uh, my mind, like forever. I'm like, pretty sure he blocked that out of his mind that he was part of that movie. <laughs> uh, the one exception to the Americans don't know how to do British accents. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple of exceptions. The one that comes straight to mind, and I'm sorry to just go right back to Joss Whedon, but is James Marsters who plays Spike. If you ever yeah. heard that guy talk, he's California shit. He's just like, oh, what's up, dudes? How we doing? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I think Julia yeah. Landau is also an English speaker. She played uh, um, Drusilla. I think they both are not British, but they convinced me. Definitely Spike more than the others. But people hear him without his accent, and it, it's off-putting. I think he was in another yeah. show, and he was speaking. I, I saw him as... I saw him in Smallville. He played Brainiac, yeah. and I was like, "Bruh, what's <laughs> happening here?" <laughs> and you're having an aneurysm because you're like, "The world doesn't make sense." I, I heard from somebody. I, I think it might have been the OMG Hour, where they were talking about Simon Pegg's going to be in something, and he's not British. Simon Pegg is in The Boys, and he is not British. Oh, okay. okay. How, how is how, how is that? Um, it's it, it's just play. He's he's just normal. He's he's yeah. the um he's the main character's father. Yeah. But which is really cool because in the comic books, he was the, the, the main the, dude. He he the like the Huey. person actually said that they modeled Huey's face after Simon Pegg. So like yeah. in the comic books, that character looks just like him, and then they got him to play that guy's father in oh. the TV show. That's cool. That's awesome. But yeah, so he does a pretty good job at it. You're saying. Yeah, I mean, he's not in it that much. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's just the guy's father. Oh, okay, Either, it's, it's it's serviceable. I didn't I I didn't even pay attention to the fact I, until you just said something. I didn't pay attention to the fact that he didn't have an accent. I just he just played it straight. He was just the guy's father. Oh, cool. But yeah, um, you guys been playing anything? Like you said that you were like quitting podcasts. You're not quitting gaming, are you? Hell no. Oh <laughs> no, I'm playing more than ever. Um, uh, and, and I can say this pretty briefly, but I, I am playing stalker. So are you guys familiar with stalker? Yes. A, a, okay. that, yeah, a, a little stalker. bit. A lot of people are going back to it. So I will admit I'm kind of surfing the zeitgeist here. I'll admit to that. But, uh, stalker came out, I think circa 2007, eight, Anyway, it was uh, it was developed in Eastern Europe, um, and I, I will have a brief history in my video. But anyway, it was developed in Eastern Europe, and it's the first example of the um, survival genre. So you have to eat, you have to watch for your your radiation. It takes place by Chernobyl. It's called Stalker: Shadow of Chernobyl. Stalker is a um, acronym, so it stands for things. And do you know how many times I had to re-record what S T A L K E R stands for? Uh, because I'm trying to do it by memory and not. That's a pretty. It. That's a pretty long acronym. Like, come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> but Shadow of Chernobyl. And again, people are growing interest in Chernobyl again, thanks to the HBO series, which is good. But I've always been fascinated by Chernobyl. And so you're basically in an irradiated area and you're trying to make it. And interest, interest in Chernobyl. That's definitely some white people shit, right? There. <laughs> white Russian people shit. Yeah. Right. Um, and of course nobody wants to, here's one thing I will say that I can't say in the video, not because I feel uncomfortable, but because I, I can't base my opinion on this, but I have a firm opinion that, um, 
people like play stalker and they're like, yeah, that must be how it is because motherfuckers have never been to Ukraine. <laughs> like nobody's <laughs> been to Crip yet. Like, which fun fact, Chernobyl's not even the name of the uh, city or the reactor that blew. Like it's, it, it was just a nickname. It was like a moniker because it had previously been called Chernobyl, but yeah, Pripyat's the city. And I'm, I need to go back and double check my facts. Again, I'm doing the finishing touches on this, but I'm pretty sure it's in the Ukraine, not in Russia. But it was a Russian. Well, in Call of Duty 4, they uh, do call it Pripyat. So. Right. Yes, they, they did keep it accurate. Yeah. And so if you've wanted to see Pripyat, they actually did in Modern Warfare, the uh, sniper mission all gillied up. Mm-hmm. That takes place. Uh, and then I think the, the follow Probably one of the most stressful missions in a, a Call of Duty Fantastic, ever. but you are absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. And that is stress. That, that two banger of uh, all gillied up and then one shot, one kill is a fantastic tour that is real damn accurate to, um, to this. You won't see that in stalker. You don't know what the fuck you, you won't recognize any of this shit. And it's mean, it's mean as shit. So like the first time I died in that game, I was handed a pistol and then I went to talk to the guy who handed me the pistol and there, and he was like, motherfucker, what's your problem? And he shot me in the face and I was like, what? And then you get this message. It's like, People are hostile if you point a gun at their face. Wait, they put Michael Rappaport in this Good game? point. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to switch to binoculars when you talk. To them. Even if you got a knife out, they're like, I know what that does. Like, so you got to be careful. And that's in the opening city. And then you just go wandering and you find out stuff by failing. So you find out interesting things like there are electrocuting invisible animals that walk around there. And um, when when shit beeps at you, when the game beeps at you, that is a code for get the fuck away from where you are right now. Um, and you move real slow and methodical. So the sound you make when you walk is one when you run, one a different level lower when you, when you walk, then a different level lower when you crouch, and a different level lower when you go prone. And this all affects your movement speed too. So it's one of those super intense sims. This is the shit that Rust was built off of. But I wanted to see what the original was. And it's real fucking cumbersome. I'm not going to lie. But uh, but like I said, I'll be getting the video out because there's a lot to appreciate there as well. It's only on PC. It has three games, but I only played the original Shadow of Chernobyl. But it's it's interesting. I like the concepts in it, and I like the basically the basis of the genre it created. The game I could take or leave. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, when it comes to survival games, I'm like, I don't really want to play video games to get super stressed out. That shit stresses me out. Stalker may not be for Nepo, me. dog. Like, Nepo. <laughs> all day, yep. every day. Absolutely. I'm not really about that life. That's why I never play a Dark Souls game, ever. Like, I'm I'm, I'm not here to get frustrated with this. I mean, I did, like, the original call, uh, original Halos on the highest difficulty, and I did uh, Legendary, Call, yeah. call, call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 on the highest difficulty. But I'll after that, you. I'm kind of I'm kind of done. I only play Halo on Legendary because, like, if you die, you gotta start the whole shit over. Like no, thank you. Right. Like, so, <laughs> so well, not if you play co op. That's 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 the secret. Is everybody's beating at co op? But um, but yeah. So in this game, the one, the couple of things I will say, if people don't want to watch the video, I'm not here to pimp the video. Uh, or if people just want to get into it, there is a just basic mod that just fixes errors and lets it run well in Windows 10. Um, it's called like ZRP. <laughs> it's like Zone Re something project, and and just Google stalker mods and you'll find it basically all this is is it's a folder you dump into your steam install or your gog install and it just runs it in widescreen mode and it works with your resolution i'm running it at 1440p uh at like unlocked frame rate like 90 frames whatever um humble right yeah uh (laughs) the other thing is uh uh, I can't play keyboard and mouse for shit. And this game has a million inputs, but I did find using a couple of people's help an X Patter profile where I've successfully mapped it to an Xbox One slash 360 controller. Works fine. Um, one thing I didn't count on was the sway made me motion sick and I don't have motion sickness, but I have experienced it with the Oculus Rift. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, I can't play that game for more than about an hour before I start getting real nauseated. And I don't get motion sickness in the real world. So That's me. That's me in Half-Life. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't get it with Half-Life, but I did get it with this. So this is more intense. So beware. 
and I ain't never, I ain't never gonna give a shit about VR. So like, I, won't, I don't have. That yeah, I'm uh, the same uh, way. I, I, I sold mine to a Russian actually, uh, because the uh, Oculus wouldn't sell to Russia. So anyway, um, but either way, I, I am somebody who's fascinated by this, so I had to know, and I will say I'm not frustrated by it. I mean, I, I use quick save and quick load liberally. Before I go and start some shit, I just like save and then I'm like, let's see where this goes. Um, and I will say I'm not stuck. I'm always making progress and the game's very good at carroting, a carrot on the sticking, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if I'll stick with it too long because it's just kind of slow paced and dare I say it, I start to get bored. And you're either the type who gets fascinated by this stuff or you're just like, I can't keep this pace going. And maybe you guys, I'm getting the the gist that like a lot of people out there, you're just the latter. You're just like, mm, I'm not, I'm not here to, I have enough problems. I will say five hours melted in a heartbeat with this game. And I'm like fucking five feet from the home base that you start off at, you know, like I'm like, I'm like in the first parts of a final fantasy or dragon warrior, but like, I haven't, I haven't gone anywhere. Um, but maybe that's all the game. About is. JRPGs, right? <laughs> maybe that's all this game is. Maybe this game's <laughs> map is not that big. I don't know. I say it without knowing. Um, but what I am fascinated by is by the game, and so I figured let's introduce some audiences to it, and let's let's do something because, of course, like you know, with YouTube, every video you read is this game's shit, and let me tell you, seventeen minutes of why. Or people are like, this game's the fucking best game ever, and you're a fucking pussy if you don't like it. And I'm trying to split the difference. Let's just let's just look at this from a realistic standpoint. If you're interested in how this genre came to be, what can you learn from this, and why would you even want to pick it up? And- let, me, let me talk about that a second. Sure. Um, the new Wolfenstein game come out, and like all the YouTubers are shitting on it, right? Okay. And um, I haven't seen, all, it, but I'll trust you. All those um. I've heard all very those, terrible things. And all, I'll, I'll all those play those games. All those same people that it's like I don't trust game journalists. I trust the YouTubers. All the YouTubers that are saying this shit. What what is the one game journalist site that they that actually has the lowest score that is right with the YouTubers is IGN. So they so IGN. <laughs> so all the YouTubers are really just regurgitating IGN. Even though they say "fuck IGN," <laughs> well, what's even more interesting about that is I actually like. I'm curious to play this game. Um, my co-op partner, let's let's all pray for him because his uh, his PC blew out, and I'm trying to figure out what it was. And he replaced his power supply, and that wasn't it. So something was making a burning smell, and it wasn't his power supply. Oh no! Uh, the good news is it wasn't his graphics card. His GTX 1070 Ti is safe. We know that works, but we're going to see. I think he just lost an i5, though. <laughs> well, um, do you own the game, Fred? Yes. I have it on that dirty Bethesda client, but apparently I can play with Steam people because the Steam client makes you log into the Bethesda. Well, if you own the game, I'll play with you for free. Excellent. We <laughs> should play through it. Because he even said, he was like, I want to play through this with you, but we can do it some other time. I'm not going to have my PC up and running anytime soon. So, um, But I loved Wolfenstein 1 and 2. One was a little more stealthy. Two was a little more you stealth until shit goes south and shit will always go south. And then you make up for it. I felt one the same way, but um, I really love one and I haven't played two yet. Two can be frustrating. It's difficult and YouTubers don't like that. But um, so <laughs> I, I, I digress. The one other thing I wanted to do, or I was doing that I wanted to talk about is, do you guys remember Summer of Arcade on the 360? Oh yeah. Yeah. They were like, here is six, four to six games. And we're going to incentivize you with money to play them. And usually they were pretty good games, right? Like that was the whole thing was after a couple of years went by, you were like, oh, I kind of want to play all these summer of arcade games. Castle Crushers come out of that. Right, right. Okay. Castle Crushers. Braid, although I don't like Braid as much as most. Um, you know, and we'll just pretend that Ninja Turtles Reshelled Edition never came out on summer of arcade. But hey, um, first MOBA came out, Saturday Night Combat. Yeah, it was the first MOBA, guys. Yeah, you don't want to admit it, but that's where it came from. Um, but uh, anyway, so I want to do my own Summer of Arcade, and I'm kind of a retro enthusiast. So my four games I played, and I can talk about them very quickly and very positively, is um, I started with Shovel Knight. I bought Shovel Knight on the Wii U, y'all, and I'd never played it. We call it Digital Shrink Wrap. I hadn't broken it from Digital Shrink Wrap, bought it day one. 
And I found out that even on the Wii U, they've updated uh, Yacht Club Games uh, updated that thing. I have all the campaigns and everything. They they updated if you were an early adopter. So good for them. So I played through Shovel Knight, just the main Shovel Knight one. There's two other campaigns with the other knights that I haven't touched yet. But Shovel Knight is just this love letter to the NES. It's a little Mega Man. It's a little DuckTales. It's a little everything else. And it's just a, sh- a shit ton of fun. Best five hours I've spent in a long time. Gets a little frustrating, but not too hard. It doesn't go Nintendo hard on you. So I really dug that. Uh, next up was uh, the, um, sorry, Time Spinners. You guys ever heard of Time Spinner? No. Okay, everybody's playing that uh, that uh, Bloodstained Time tonight. Spinner? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I played the first one, but I haven't played the second one yet. I really want it there. Okay, I, yeah, I, I have no idea what none of this shit is. Yeah. So Bloodstained <laughs> Tonight was Iga, um, Koji Igarashi, uh, who made uh, Symphony of the Night. It was his Patreon game that took forever to come out. And um, it's basically Symphony of the Night, right? So everybody's playing it. Everyone's spending 40 bucks. They're not quite sure if they love it, but most people think really positive things about it. Um, so... Time Spinner had a very unfortunate release uh, last year, but it slowly trickled out to the other consoles. And it is Symphony of the Nights. It's a it's a developer's love letter to Symphony of the Night. It's only twenty bucks, and it's on everything. It's on the Vita, so like it's on everything. And it became part of Game Pass. So if you have Xbox Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate, you can get the PC or the Xbox version of it. So I said I wanted to play it. it takes about six seven hours to complete. And it is Symphony of the Night. It is absolutely Symphony of the Night. And if you've been waiting for that and you're not quite ready to pull the trigger on Bloodstained because, I don't know, I just didn't want to pay 40 bucks for a Symphony of the Night clone. Um, it is fantastic. I definitely recommend people check it out. I had a lot of fun with it. 100%ing that game was a little frustrating. There's a couple of jumps that just had me wanting to kill somebody. But you don't have to do that to beat the game. The game's very serviceable without it. Um, then another one that was on Game Pass Ultimate, but it is available elsewhere, was The Messenger. Anybody heard of The Messenger? Yeah. I haven't played it yet there. I've heard of it, but I haven't, I haven't played it, but I've, did, I've, I've definitely heard like, of that one. Yeah, it's like a user-friendly um, Ninja Gaiden, NES-era Ninja Gaiden. So we're back to the Nintendo kids. But um, it's uh, kind of a Ninja Gaiden thing, but then there's a twist about three hours in. It takes a little too long to happen, in my opinion. There's a twist three hours in that's kind of dope. And I had a lot of fun with that game. That game was about seven hours. And I had a, a lot of fun with that. But like I said, I'm doing my own little summer of arcade. And I got to say, like, I'm just having a lot of fun. Oh, and then the last one was Blazing Chrome. And again, I'll tell you, this was also on Xbox Game Pass. I have Game Pass. I'm not trying to promote it. It's just these games were all free. So that makes it easy. Uh, and that's Contra. That's your Contra ass. Contra 3 Alien Wars. Contra Hardcore game. It's tough as balls. I beat level two and I got one of those special achievements where there's a little diamond on it because you've only completed only like 8% of people who've played this game have completed that. So it's hard as hell. You got to play every level. Every level is about So basically you made a Call of Duty campaign. <laughs> there's no respawn though. So. Um, but uh, it's, again, it's hard as hell. Every level 15 minutes, which is, yeah, I guess it's a Call of Duty campaign, but Every level is 15 minutes, so you just get to know the level, and then you eventually beat it. But like I said, for a retro guy like me, it was just really fun to play all these really cool versions of like retro games. And even if you don't have Game Pass, these games are like 15, 20 bucks. Like they're they're like nothing. And it's definitely the essence of what I think of when I thought of Summer of Arcade. So I really dug them, especially if you have Game Pass. I think almost all these games are free to download, so check them out. But even if you don't, um, depending on what's your what's up your alley, hopefully there's something here for you. Uh, and they were all really cool. So you should play um, Katana Zero. I, I really like that game. Katana Zero. Okay. Yeah. You should what check it out, man. Is it on? Do, is it on? I'm not. I played it on on Steam, but I'm not sure if it's on Xbox and all that stuff. Cool. I will add it. I see it here. Yeah. But it's really good. Oh yes. Oh, somebody else told me to play this game. I just, I've only seen screenshots. I will take your recommendation on that, sir. There's a CRT mode, really? Like, it looks like an old fucking TV that I used to have in my bedroom? Cool. (laughs) So so it has a Blood Dragon mode? (laughs) Oh, yeah, it does. And it's on Switch. So all, I'm not a huge Switch fan, but I get the draw. All you Switch fans, feel free to jump all over it. 
But uh, I, 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 so Matt, what you been playing, playing, man? Uh, I've been doing the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That game is incredible. Oh my God, is it, it is huge. It's beautiful. So much to do. I'm really digging the story from way back when. You've been playing then, that for a minute, have you? Oh, I've been playing that for a while. I'm I'm a slow gamer. I'm a very slow gamer. Okay, especially now with these games getting bigger and bigger than what it used to be. And then I picked up uh, Madden 20. I haven't played a Madden game in a while, so I went and got got it. And uh, I'm enjoying it. It's the same old Madden, though. You know, it's got the same funny issues. You know, same funny shit that goes on. But it's good. I, I'm I've always been a sucker for sports games. And uh, I'm loving it. I subscribed to EA Access earlier uh, this year. And so I was able to take advantage of it. You know, some deals with there. And I've been getting the NHL 19 and NBA and that. So it's a lot of fun getting those games. I, I, really, dig, a- I really dig live. Yeah. I like it. I had a question about the EA Access thing. Does it let you play any part, if not all the parts, of the uh, campaign of Madden? Uh, it gives you ten hours at first. Okay, so you get so you ten can, hour you trial. Can play the campaign. They used to block think, the campaign. No, I think I think it gives you ten hours. You can do whatever you want within that ten hours, and then uh, after that ten hours is up, then you know obviously you're screwed. Right. You have to you gotta buy the game. I wouldn't say yeah. you're screwed, but yeah, you got to buy yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there were some games that you have where it actually like. Even if you try to do a single player mode, it will stop you at a certain point during your ten hours. Um, like like for like back at, back when it first started, like uh, was it um, the Battlefield game that was tops? Was it Hardline? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it would it would stop you after like the Battlefield first three one missions. definitely stopped you. Yeah. Yeah, it it will stop you after like first three missions. Um, I think what you call it. Um, in drama, uh, uh, Mass Effect, Mass, yeah, Mass Effect stopped you from yeah. leaving the first planet, like you know yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, it wouldn't even let you go uh, in the it, vault. <laughs> well, and Madden eighteen yeah. didn't let you do um, that cre- uh, that really good campaign mode they had. It was called like Superstar. Yeah, um, it's yeah, called you know, like that um, reality show and all that shit. Yeah, uh, um, what is it were, called? Yeah, you played like a yeah, you played like a high long school, shot, long shot, long shot. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. available now. Like, if you have access now, I think they let you go back and do it. But back yeah. in the day, like, yeah, you'd hit it. You you'd hit the campaign thing, and it'd be like, "Sorry, this isn't a mode we want you to see." And I'm like, I thought everybody should play Long Shot. I figured it would sell more Madden than if they blocked it. I still think yeah, it's it's EA. a but 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 all of the EA access stuff. What they do is they give you the first ten hours, and then after a couple of months, they put it in the vault, and then you have access to the full game. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, and I've had EA access for longer than I care to admit, but uh, but I was wondering because it's been a long time since I've played a game that wasn't in the vault, and I was like, wonder what they do with the new stuff. Of course, I'm going to take advantage of it for the new Star Wars game, um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, just. Anthem, when it came out, it was 10 hours. You could do whatever you wanted to do. And then once that was up, <laughs> most of the 10 hours were spent in loading screens. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have <laughs> Anthem yeah. on PC and uh, it, it loads been, very fast, but still, yeah. I'm wouldn't you. it have been hilarious if the loading screens got immediately better after it got off a... Of, um, I would have wished. I, I would have like wished, like wished that. I feel like there was an analysis on that. No, okay. What it was was they were assessing that if you just like kind of went main campaign on Anthem, you hit the uh, fetch quests right mm. before uh, your ten hours was up, so that you there was no way you could get past those. And there was this theory online, which is I think it's very tinfoil hat. I think it was just circumstantial that. The fetch quests were put so late in the game. They are pretty late in the campaign if you've played through it. Um, because they wanted to make sure everybody hit a wall if they were playing on access before yeah, the end game shit. Yeah. That's pretty much and what I was they like, did. Dude. <laughs> Such a shame about Anthem. Do you remember that when Bioware didn't the listen to the public? Boy, that was a good time. I remember when game companies didn't listen to fucking people on the internet. <laughs> For real, I tell I tell everybody every time we talk about this shit, everything the whole game got switched up. Like the all gaming, everything got switched up with Mass Effect Three. Mass Effect Three fucked it up for everybody because the trolls won. Yeah, Bioware walked and once out they realized they could win. The air. Yeah, 
Yeah, once they realized they could win, everything got fucked up after that. Yeah, the wall fell down. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And then they started firing people, and that worked. And they were like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the doctors just was like, man, fuck this shit. We out. It's like... Yeah, Don't one, one went off to get drunk and the other one went off to like find the universe, right? One started a winery and the other one went to like walk the world like Kane from Kung Fu. <laughs> What's this tool? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Scar, you've been playing. Maybe it still comes back and does concerts though. <laughs> yeah, I need to come back and save Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah. You been playing anything, Scar? Um, I don't want to talk about much because my my thing keeps pausing. Um, I played. I've, I've been playing still NBA Live. I downloaded uh, uh, Madden so that I can play the face of the franchise. I have not yet, but I want to. And um, I Is this played on your a Switch? shit ton. This is on your Switch. Madden's, uh, Madden's not on the Switch. I ain't touched I, I the mean, Switch in so long. Well, I thought you, the NBA Live might have been you were playing it on the Switch. I wish, but no. The, the, I don't think any of the EA Sports stuff is on. Ones. Well, there was one Which, NBA game you were playing on there. I did I did have uh, 2K18 oh, okay. on the Switch. Um, but once I started playing live, I kind of just backed away from 2K because live doesn't expect me to pay any more money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you like you actually have character progression and all of that kind of stuff. It works out pretty well. Um, it doesn't have the story, the story beats of it, but it doesn't work to pay any more money, so I am good. Um, and I play a ton of RimWorld. Um, was it Saturday night? I played until 6 o'clock Sunday morning, just playing all the way through. Just like having a ball, like I gotta do this one last thing. I gotta do this one last thing. Next thing I know, it's six o'clock in the morning. Oh man, that's that sucks yeah. the next day, but that's the best when you're doing it. <laughs> that yeah, that sounds like drinking. <sighs> yeah, I wish I wish you my know? internet was better, and I would stream it. I, uh, if my internet was better, I would have streamed it that whole time. I had an absolute blast. <laughs> I long, but yeah, that's that's all I really been playing. Yeah, playing. That's awesome. Well, you did it last year with me. Yes, I did. Actually, the last time that happened, Chase was there. (laughs) Yeah, we played through Fear Three. That That was was fantastic. I loved Fear Three. (laughs) Mm. But yeah, I've actually (laughs) been um, been playing The Witcher Three. Like, um, it's been taking me a while to get through it. Like, like, kind of like what Matt was saying, like, kind of a slow gamer, and, and to what Fred was saying is just playing stuff when you want to play it. Like, that's what I want to play, and um, I, I bought it in December of last year, and I pretty much just off and on trying to get through it. But there's a lot to do in that game, and and like meaty shit. To where like Amber was like watched me play, and she was like, "Oh, what's going on now?" I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm just raiding this king," and he was like. And I was like, oh, well, that's a side quest done. It's just a ma- freaking major freaking story plot thing that, oh, yeah, that was a side quest. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And play those DLCs, Chase. Just keep going with it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play the DLCs. But all the DLCs are, like, ranked, like, in the 30, um, 30, I- I'm, like, level 23 right now. So I'm pretty sure that the DLCs, so I'm... I want to play that after the fact. Oh, no, you absolutely do those after you beat the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, and and do a decent amount of side content. Get to the level recommendation, but it's all worth it. And just take your time. It took me eight months to beat Red Dead Redemption 2. Whatever. It was fine. Yeah, and and it's cool because um, I wasn't even trying. I heard that people were like, oh, you have to do this special thing or whatever, but I totally got the unicorn scene, and I wasn't even trying to. (laughs) I was actually. I, that. I had to see that on YouTube later. Yeah, I, I I think it was because I I was at the level requirement to go to Skellige, so I just went. So that was before I went back and did Triss's side stuff. So I, I was probably going to go with Triss. You, you know what I mean? Because I didn't really play Witcher One, and um, so I mostly knew her from Witcher Two, and um, yeah, but yeah, I, I just Witcher went into. I remember. 
So when I went in the Skellig, I was like, oh, yeah, unicorn scenes happen. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't we played Witcher 1. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't remember Yennefer much in Witcher 1. I think you're with Triss also. But you're not, uh, you're not like, you know, biblical yet. Um, but uh, well, maybe you get biblical. I forget. A lot of boning in Witcher 1 and 2. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yennefer is like a, a mythos, right? Like you don't meet her until the third game, as far as I recall, outside of the books. So, oh, okay. Yeah. She might be in some of the early parts of Witcher 1. Witcher 1 is like a blurry 60 hours of my life. Like, and I wasn't even drunk through most of it. It's just, it all blends together. Witcher 1 was more gameplay than, it had a lot of story, but it was like slow paced stories. Yeah, because I... Uh... Because I had got to the ugly baby part, and then every time I tried to go to do that, it was like, oh, you failed these quests. I was like, okay, let me restart and um, go back to my save, because I didn't want qu- to fail quest by just not knowing that I'm not supposed to go to a certain area. Yeah. If I made a bad decision, I would go, I would play through it that way, because, little slight spoilers, The um, in my playthrough, the Baron dies, okay. and then Kira... The, the witch lady, mm-hmm. like, I, I was just talking to her. She was like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And I, and, and I was like, totally like, those people do not like witches. You should not do that thing. And then she kept on. I was like, you really shouldn't do this. She's like, I'm doing this. I'm going to fucking fight you. And then I'm like, okay, this is happening. And I killed her. So I do not have anybody from Velen to, like, have my back because they're both dead. <laughs> So, because I'm a blind player, like I, I'm, I, yeah. I don't want to like go to the internet and be like, I'm going to try to get the best ending because. Well, and I'm hoping that yeah, that cyberpunk is a little better at projecting the repercussions of those actions. Like, it doesn't need to have like a big red flag or anything. But well, uh, I, per- I, yeah, I don't mind the the repercussions of my actions being kind of in. Because that was kind of cool that I did this one little thing and it had consequences down the road. That's cool. But just going to start a quest, you fail these quests. quests is what, yeah, that's the, the issue I have. Um, Quantum Break did this a little better. I, they, they need to do it less transparent, but where it like showed you both paths and you had to decide when you kind of knew both paths. Mm-hmm. Or maybe that was uh, Life is Strange. Anyway, the point is, is that they need to find a balance of that. But yeah, they shouldn't let you start quests you can fail just based off of behavior. Like they need to find a balance there and hopefully they'll do it with Cyberpunk. I don't know. CD Projekt Red still makes fantastic games, but there was some weird weirdness at the beginning of of Witcher One it, or Witcher Three. You you probably know this already since you've been to Skellige, but it really doesn't happen anywhere else. But in that opening area with the Bloody Baron, yeah, it's definitely there's some weird stuff you can fail based off of decisions that they just need to clean up more. Yeah. So that's the only thing I looked up. Which quest will I fail by getting? The ugly baby. It's just a it's just a case of like doing it in order, really. You just have to do those quests first, as I recall. But yeah, so so I went and and did all the stuff I needed in Skellige and did the ugly baby thing, and now I'm just going to go wrap up some stuff that I can do. But because I actually did most of the stuff that I could do, that they, there's like Witcher cr- contracts in Velen that are like 26. Yes, they are. So I did a couple of them. I I rambled with a baby dragon. It was fun. <laughs> So. so yeah, but yeah, that's been that's been really cool. And but yeah, like that's a really polished game. Other than I mean, there's a couple mm-hmm. of nitpicks, but yeah, it's really good. So yeah. that's pretty much been all I've been playing. I, I think uh, I I actually went back, like I said a little bit earlier, I went back and played Fallout Three on G- the GOG version, and um, man, I blasted through the main story. And I didn't realize how short that main story was. And <laughs> so it games like 10 hours. If you just do the main story and it's, well, maybe it's more like 20 hours, but still it's way shorter than you think. But there, there is a little tidbit that if anybody's going to go back and play fallout three, if they have the, all the DLCs don't do Anchorage before you do the shoot them in the head quest, because the power armor you get in Anchorage the guy that gives you the, that quest will be like, oh yeah, you stole that from me. Because the game doesn't know the difference between the power armor you get from Anchorage and the power armor you get from him. 
it's like the basically the same armor. So you, I didn't fail the quest. It just said I did the quest. So but, the game was originally designed to end at the end of the campaign, and then they hacked it in later to continue. And so I think that's that's the problem is that Operation Anchorage assumes you've done everything first in the main game. Yeah. So it's it's just Bethesda. It's an oversight. It's probably a tough decision. I don't know how you kind of reconcile that. Yeah, but since but, it didn't have achievements on GOG, so I was like, like fuck it. <laughs> you know, it's not like a big quest that I was like, oh, I need to do this. But yeah. If you have an Xbox One X, Fallout 3 looks awesome on it. Cool. Well, I mean, wow, Fallout 3 man. looked awesome on my... Um... Oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> uh, it's X-enhanced, though. It's 10-bit color and 4K on, on an Xbox three or on an Xbox One X. Um, but again, HDR? it's just where you prefer to buy it, not HDR. Just 10-bit okay. color. A- it's HD- a little different. HDR on a Bethesda game would probably like shit anyway. <laughs> probably. <laughs> they yeah. put it in the algorithm and it'll look ugly. <laughs> But yeah, that's been me. So I, I think we should probably. This has been almost a two-hour podcast. Yeah, that's like um, not normal for us. <laughs> no, not at all. And I'm sleepy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, since you just did the majority of the talk, um, Rojas, tell the people where they can find you. Sure. Uh, the easiest place is I still have my website, GamingHistory101.com, where you can just see the uh, the past. You can get all our old podcasts, see all of our old uh, articles and stuff. We still had podcasts going live for the next couple of weeks. And then I'm at YouTube.com forward slash VGPTGS is the URL I got years ago and they won't let me change. Uh, if it's easier for you, it's just YouTube.com forward slash Fred Rojas as well, which is F R E D. R O J A S. So, um, but that's where my stuff is. Where can they find Man. you? What are you doing? What, what, what? Do it. Seriously, Chase, what the fuck are you doing? I thought we were a um, team here. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, my friend, you know what? How's bar? Good, fine, good, great. I, I probably should have asked that at the beginning of the episode. How's the 20, uh, how's the $20 thing going on? <laughs> The, the twenty dollars. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we gotta talk about that. Yeah, she, she likes to go to the uh, ATM and get twenty bucks out to check on the finances and shit, and see what's uh, see what's going on. In the, yeah, she, she doesn't me. check it on. She doesn't check it on the app. Just take twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. like, right. Oh my god, that's what she's doing. So, uh, no, she, she's been doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, she's. Still working her third shift now. She loves it. Uh, but you can find me on uh, Bad Fodder Figures. Uh, comes out every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, myself and Cat Mike M and Eric Glover, you know, Glove Box. We're three plugging away at that and having fun doing it, talking about all types of crazy shit. So Word up. Check us out there. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was awesome. No problem, man. Yeah. It's been fun. I like the I know, idea. I know Chase has been trying to get you on for quite some time. Yeah, I know. So I'm so uh, glad we finally made fine. that. I'm glad, glad things finally worked out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, I'm not. I'm not giving Chase uh, any more room to talk. <laughs> so, um, so on, on behalf of everybody listening, whether the people listening now or the people listening later, uh, thank y'all for being on the show uh, for kicking off August. August. Uh, we appreciate y'all uh, so much. And like, this is, this is like been the longest show in quite some time. Like this is, this it was actually pretty dope. Like it was not like a conversation where there was like dead spots. So, like that's, that's the like cool part about it. Like we really kind of kept this thing rolling. Uh, and, um, I'm pretty sure like everybody who listens later will, will appreciate that. Uh, but, I, but we, me and Chase, we appreciate y'all for kicking everything off. Um, and so, you know, find us, uh, in all of the places, even on Spotify and all of the other stuff. Um, to do, go to the YouTube and you know, we should do something for the YouTube. We're like we should do a contest or something for like people can find something that they can only see if they watch the video. Like, Ooh. you know, what I mean? like, you know, what I mean, like something like that. We should do something like weird like that. Like, you know, the first person who could tell us what what is that 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 poster over there on Rojas's picture? Um, like, like something like that, like, you know, something like that. Like, we should do something like that. Um, I'm going to think of that. And then, we're, and then I'm going to keep thinking about it and not actually do it. Well, we should totally do that one. What 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 um, poster 
is in um, Fred Rojas' screenshot here. Yeah. I think no, no, don't say I it. Can, I, I know I, what I, it I is. I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy I gotta make to it, tell. I yeah. can make it bigger. I need to make it big. Oh, okay. I know what it is. I can um, tell you what it is. Yeah, I'm not going to say it on here, but yeah, you can you can tell what it is if you it's it's an older game but yeah yeah the 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 first person that tweets the the one of us me me or chase everything all of that stuff is in the show notes um what is the poster in rojas's room will win something i'll figure out what that is nice oh speaking of winning stuff something i finally got those paintings uh sent to cam and he loved them and that's and that's that's awesome. I finally, you know what? The the person who does that will will win a win a painting. We'll do a painting. Ooh. And I, I'll do I'll do whatever colors or whatever you want. Word up, word up. Um, so thank y'all for checking your boys out. We appreciate y'all. Um, for the homie Chase, um, and for my man Rojas and Mr. Matt. Uh, this is Garcasm, and we're out of here. Peace out to the Warriors, yo. Later. <laughs> I like that shit, yeah, boy. I'm telling you, whoa. I'm telling. All right, I ain't gonna talk. <laughs> like my freaking <laughs> browser refreshed twice <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I was like, oh, did he just say fuck it and left? No. My my browser like would like automatically refresh. Like, what the hell is this shit? Oh my god! Yeah, that picture that's up there.